So thanks very much for the invitation to be here today. It's fantastic to be in Edinburgh. I almost wasn't sure if I would make it. I <laughs> broke my arm rollerblading, and, uh, and, but they've put it back together with lots of metal and screws and seems to be working. So <laughs> I'm very happy today to talk about the big picture and open access content aggregators as drivers of impact. And I want to start um, at the point where a lot of researchers are starting that they feel there is an information overload. Yearly, roughly 1.8 million articles, depending on how you count, in roughly 28,000 scholarly publications, journals, um, and authors feel like it's too much. Um, and the, um, the good news, or bad, is that there's more on the way. Um, digitalization has opened up lots of new channels um, for making scientific research public. So now um, researchers have to also check preprint servers, blogs, web pages, institutional repositories. Um, and digitalization has also made it very easy to start new journals, new projects. So we're seeing right now an explosion in new outlets for information. Also, the economic logic of open access um, based on article processing charges is simply the case that um, publishers are rewarded for publishing more rather than less. So other, uh, uh, in the subscription model, there's a, an advantage to, uh, financial advantage to being more selective. It's simply the case that the economic logic of open access says, bring it on. Um, there's also coming from the scientific community calls for more different kinds of publications. So negative results, we want all clinical trials, we want data sets, we want micro publications. There's a, also an explosion of new different kinds of ways to publish your work. And we saw already this morning some fantastic um, new kinds of publications that aren't even on the radar for a lot of scientists at the bench. And we see in the next five years, um, places like China, India, Brazil, really joining the scientific um, information market. So all of these trends are really pushing towards more publications rather than less. And anybody, I talk to scientists all the time, and they say, well, we just want people to stop publishing so much. That's not going to happen. Um, so. What we need are good discovery tools and how um, are researchers finding relevant articles. They're using search engines a lot. Um, they're looking for specific information. So they're going to Google. Amazing number of uh, young scientists are pretty much 90% using Google. Um, indexing services um, such as PubMed, Scopus, Cielo, Web of Science. Um, these give to, uh, researchers tools for more advanced searches to narrow down um, uh, what they're looking for. But if they want to get an overview of breast cancer, then you are still dealing with hundreds of thousands of articles that you still have to sift through, and that's um, difficult to do by hand. People are finding new articles through networking channels. Yesterday, somebody told me that they find pretty much all the new articles that they're interested in over Twitter. Um, people use conferences, Mendeley, um, ResearchGate. There's lots of um, networking tools that people are using more and more to discover new um, uh, articles. And also, traditionally, um, topical bundling, specifically journals, is one of the ways that people um, could find things that are based, uh, are, are narrowed down, focused on their field. So we um, also are seeing in the digital world, based on um, mega journals, more collections um, of specifically topical material. Those are other ways that um, researchers can find relevant articles. What all of those things don't necessarily do, though, is rank that information in what's more important, what's less important. Um, and so I think that's one of the things where as we get more and more information, would be very helpful to researchers to start providing some more ranking tools. Um, it 
gives orientation, provides context within a certain group. What are the most read? What are the most cited? What are the most shared? Um, it can provide inspiration. People can find things that they weren't necessarily have on their radar. Also time saving. But we also need to keep in mind reputation and career. Um, those are some of the big motivating forces that I, um, we sometimes don't want to talk about in science, but in actual fact, um, really informs a lot of what scientists do. Um, so what are the tools that we have right now? The main um, tool that people are using to um, in make those kind of ranking decisions is the impact factor. Yesterday, the impact factor, the new impact factors from last year were released, so the next weeks are going to be an explosion of discussion about the impact factor. I don't want to go into any detail right here on all the problems involved um, uh, uh, with, this, um, with this tool, but basically everybody, um, everybody at a high level is uh, in agreement that the impact factor is not a very good measure of, the, of how useful an individual article, or really just how important, how novel an individual article within the journal um, is. So for researchers coming um, uh, at looking for a specific piece of information through Google or through PubMed, the impact factor is not very helpful. Um, and nevertheless, it's an extremely durable um, uh, metric. It's something that really shapes science, scientists' lives. Um, people make lots of decisions based on the impact factor every day. Um, so it's something we need to change as fast as possible. <laughs> um, and of course, there's a huge financial pressure coming from the publishers to keep the impact factor as it is. You can see um, from this slide that I pulled off of Twitter last night um, that the higher the impact factor, the more publishers are charging for the journal. So, in general, this, there's, uh, this, this system is very much supported by the publishers and they're not, so not going to let go of it very, all that soon. But if we want to move from journal level metrics, which don't tell us very much about the article, to article-based tools, there are already a lot of um, them at our fingertips, usage statistics, social media mentions, mentions in news media, blogs, podcasts, radio, television, um, as well as citations in scientific literature, open peer review reports, comments, um, citation management tools like Mendeley and Cite You Like, and as well, um, we already heard this morning from some even more um, uh, novel ways of citing data and um, giving people credit. But uh, I think these tools, these article-based tools, are going to really form the basis for a new way to make sense of um, all of this scientific literature. So right now, there really is an opportunity that open access is making large numbers of structured research articles available um, across all publishers, um, the PubMed Central open access data subset that, you can, that has an API that you can just download, this huge data set of research articles is a fantastic place to start and there are lots of projects that are working with this data. And the more people who are taking this growing, this growing um, body of literature and doing experiments with them, the more that... that researchers are going to say, wait, why isn't my paper part of this new tool? Why can't I find out my score? Why can't I see my paper? Oh, because it's behind a paywall. Oh, because it belongs to a publisher. I think this is going to be also one of the pressures to start encouraging the scientific community to value open access, because even as we heard um, um, that, uh, that open is the new normal, this is true for our, I think, um, 
uh, for our tip of the iceberg, but I think we shouldn't underestimate the fact that open access publications are only about 10% right now. It's also not growing in this um, um, extreme way that we really hoped that it would be. And for a lot of, um, for a lot of scientists, open access is still, they're not really sure what to do about it. So I think there really has to be more, more incentives and more pressure in the system to get the whole body of scientists excited about publishing open access. And that's only going to happen when they see there are actual incentives for them to do so. Um, so uh, I wanted to talk today about Science Open, our project, um, as a case study of we took this um, open access um, data subset from PubMed Central and start playing with it. What can we do? How can we build um, a, a new system uh, based on open access? So what is Science Open? We are a next generation open access communication platform. We're both publisher, but our focus is really on communication. We have right now 1.5 million aggregated open access articles that we've opened up to post-publication peer review and collection building. We also have a whole suite of social networking tools and collaboration tools for users within the system. And as a publisher, we ourselves are doing experiments with um, peer review um, and we offer an immediate publication then followed by a transparent network-based peer review afterward. Um, so we really are trying to com um, come at the topic of communication from different um, angles. So here's, a, here's just an example of um, an article page. What can you do if you land on an article from a, a publisher that has been imported into the Science Open website from, um, through PubMed Central? You can see, you can download the PDF, the XML, um, you can share um, via all kinds of social media, you can review it, or you can invite a reviewer, you can comment, bookmark, search for similar, or you can just like it if you uh, want to give it a plus one. We offer um, the altmetrics on uh, all of these papers. You can get a feel for how often it's um, been discussed in the um, social media. Um, so what, uh, just in, as an overview of what our contact content aggregation on Science Open looks like. We offer advanced search functionalities on all of these um, papers. We have saved searches with a notification whenever new content is added that meets your content search. Search for similar content on Science Open according to keywords, authors, um, institutes. Uh, we have altmetric information on every paper and we have commenting and post-publication peer review on all this content. But one thing that's missing from this um, project is really the ability to rank um, articles within a certain field. So if I look up uh, breast cancer, then I would like to be able to rank those articles on according to various, according to various um, ca uh, categories and also across publishers. So I want to be able to see that this PLOS paper was um, cited this many times with this altmetric score compared to this Springer paper, compared to this Pensoft paper, compared to um, any other publisher who's on our site. So that's what we're working on now. And what's um, uh, coming up is to create a citation network within um, the data that we have on the Science Open platform sort of, and also create then reference stubs for content that's not on the platform um, because it's paywalled. So create the metadata, check the metadata. We will also then be creating author profiles and this can then give us the possibility to start ranking the content within the platform. And then this also um, uh, will be included with a recommendation function. Um, if you land on an article page, these are um, other papers that could be interesting to you. Um, so
So if we have this whole uh, big set of data from a lot of different publishers, a lot of different journals, um, sometimes just a subset of their open access uh, journal um, uh, content, we started asking ourselves, well, what aspects of scholarly journals are really most important to the users? Why do we still have journals? Or what is the real um, uh, goal of a scientific journal in this digital age? Um, and that is topic-specific bundling, editorial selection. So I want to know really what this editor finds interesting, as well as quality assurance and trust and reliability. So the Science Open Collections can provide these functions beyond individual publishers or journals. So as an editor, I can choose from all of the content on the site, put it together as a kind of virtual um, journal, a collection, as an overlay to this um, big database. Um, so to give you an idea of what um, that some of those look like, uh, we have ones that are driven by a researcher who, as part of their research, has said these 20 papers in open access are particularly interesting, um, and let's discuss them. We also have space on our platform for publishers to actually brand their material, so it's easier to, you can slice and dice however you want, you want to see what Tima has on Science Open, you can um, go to their landing page. Also for promotion for new journals that other publishers have started. Um, and then these, uh, of course, these case reports can show up in other case report collections. So it's not, it's not limited to only this one journal. This is just one way to look at the um, papers on the site. Also, we have a collection of the best of open access um, promotion by the um, International Union of Crystallography. They took their top papers and put them together as a um, collection to say these are the most um, interesting papers that we published this year as a celebration of one year of their open access journal. Um, so uh, in summary, I would say we really are pretty much probably here in this room all agreed that we have to move about move beyond the impact factor um, and I think we really need new ways to rate and rank content across publishers to compare between different publishers and for that we also would like to create new tools for content owners be they publishers societies or authors to promote their work within this database either as collections um, or in other networked ways. And I think that aggregators will be pushing the envelope of why does it make sense to publish open access? What can, what can start happening if you publish access, uh, open access? Where will your research show up? Who might be looking at your research? Um, and I think that that could be one of the um, reasons for the general scientist to consider it more carefully when he makes a decision to give away his copyright. Um, and, but to do that, we really are going to have to provide some kind of reward system beyond the impact factor to make that whole thing attractive. So that's what we're trying to do with Science Open. And uh, thank you all for listening. Mm -hmm.
science open or you have any ideas about how aggregating tools like this might, instead of giving you a search result that ranks by how many times it's been retweeted or how many times it's been cited, how much you could believe what it says? Um, I think that's probably, um, that's something that we are thinking about. We were talking um, late last year also with John Ioannidis about how could we introduce some kind of reproducing